Now, I say this game it might be over, but, you know, even though Giant is, is almost assuredly dead, uh, I also would have, like, tried to wall this area off, maybe escape some villagers. Uh, okay, he's escaping some villagers. I would not resign yet, though, because Blue is pushing on the other side of the map. I like these stone walls here again. Nice nice defense from Tormakoi. He's been watching the videos, we can tell. <laughs> some solid uh, defensive castle. This is a decent defensive castle placement. He's got these houses here. Making it very difficult for Blue to just get the units in. Stall the bleeding. If Blue can kill Red, then maybe they're even. Uh, but here's the thing. This happens a lot in your average Black Forest game at Age of Empires. What do you do when you've lost a flank, but you're about to take down the other one? One, don't resign. Two, stone wall. Just am amputate. Don't die to gangrene because you just let your, your leg get infected. Just amputate it and move on. <laughs> as long as Yellow got some villagers in here, which he did, by the way, I would not have built the towns under here. I would have built it like over here or something like that. Because uh, this is way too close to the battle line. Amputate immediately. Just, just stone wall. Stop the bleeding. Stall. Because your only win condition at this point is that blue manages to somehow kill red, and if you lose teal, the game is over. It's no longer a fair trade of one player for one player. Yeah, the black one says teal made the classic mistake of making your Civ's strongest units under all circumstances. Um, yeah, you want to make sure that you're able to adapt and actually make the units for the situation, not just the ones that are uh, strong for this uh, strong for your Civ. Uh, Quorum Club says hi, Resonance Twenty Two. Hello, Quorum Club. I average around 1650 7050 ELO, and I want to ask for some tips on how I improve. I usually play BF and I go for the boom skirmishers and scene owners. Well, uh, watch this video, and I'll post it on YouTube, and hopefully it helps you. There are a lot of things I covered in this one. Keep watching the videos. Um, particularly my most recent uploads should help a lot with this. Uh, just everything I was talking about in this specific video. Hello, Armgan. So you're welcome for the stream. It's 234 in Pakistan. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoy your stay. Giant's pretty dead, but he did manage to hold the line. Um, he just needs to... Okay, so when you lose your base, what do you do? Amputate. So, okay, one, don't resign. Two, amputate. And three, multiply. Start making, like, a ton of town centers. I want to see all these villagers. None of them should be chopping wood. We need, like, four or five plus town centers. Uh, why? Because, again, Blue's creating a diversion. Maybe the game's not over yet. Maybe he can actually do something, but he's not going to do anything if you're not working on your eco. Teal's also doing something. Uh, Giant needs to make like 50 town centers right about now. <laughs> I love it when this happens. See, Black Forest is sick. I know it's slow, and some new players like to do the no rush till 50 minutes thing, but Black Forest on a higher level, once you get more comfortable with the game, is epic. I love all the strategy that comes into your unit choices because you have just so many options at your disposal in the late game. You have access to every single unit for your civilization. There's so much strategy to it. Knowing where to position your army, what units to make, when to push, when to shift your game plan. There's a lot to it. And we see this in Arabia as well, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's, a, it's a different, interesting skill set. Uh, and it's a very fun, interesting map to watch. And here we see that Blue and Teal showing promising signs of life. They have walled up here. There is a hole. Actually, they have a decent army. They should move it up. Are they going to win? Yellow's not dead yet either. Right? Yellow, replace that economy. Replace it. 50 town centers. Seriously, you need to make sure that you get to back to like 120 villagers as fast as humanly possible in order to do that. That should be the number one priority. Like, he's making all these military units right now and his team is not using theirs for some reason. They need to move theirs up. He should just stop doing that and just make like a ridiculous amount of town centers. Also, not right next to the battle line like it should be. You want to pick a spot that is safe, that doesn't really obstruct a trade. Uh, this is a spot where you can put one town center. You can put like a bunch over here. Uh, probably put like a lumber camp over here, doesn't really block anything. Uh, put a tent center over here. Just multiply. So don't resign, amputate, and multiply. The game still might be over, uh, as it looks like they were actually successfully repelled here. But it's just for future reference, because I can't even begin to tell you how many games I have won uh, because we did the whole amputate thing, and then you focus on your economy. Because you're going to be complete dead weight to your team if you don't end up uh, building back your economy, because then you're just going to run out of resources so very fast if you blew all those in military units. It'd be so much more useful with a fully boomed economy. And it looks like this comeback was short-lived, but I do think that Teal and Blue had exactly the right idea of how to claw their way back into the game from the depths. That's how you do it. Try something different. Stem the bleeding! This should be a gate, or something like that. Uh, and then just try and push somewhere else. I mean, maybe they can still win if this is a gate, because, again, you don't want your opponents to just realize that this is open and just kill this market which is right here uh, and since yellow is just not putting down additional town centers for some reason 
Uh, then uh, they're, they're going to have a lot of trouble making a comeback. They're showing so much promising signs of life. If they could just move these units up and just keep applying the pressure, because Orange moved all of his military over here, so your first thought should be, all right, I'm going to push on this side, you know, really keep them busy. But they're just not doing that. Green coming back in here. Again, Yellow has, like, how many villagers? Like, 20? He needs to make, like, way more town centers. This should be a gate, by the way. Because you don't want anyone to bypass all that stuff. This is what I mean by these should be gates. I like to have multiple layers of gates that are, like, significantly spaced apart from each other. That way my army doesn't accidentally open the gate and then just let the military units in. Blackman says, let me guess, you were the flank player that excelled at booming and stalling? Gotcha. Yep. Also, welcome to the stream, T90. Good to see you. Yeah, when I used to play a lot of, like, high-rated, like, 1700, uh, it's not, like, high-rated, but... Compared to HD, 1700 Black Forest on Vubli is, like, 2.2k or something. Uh, I used to do a lot of that on Vubli back in the day, and, yeah, usually on the flank I was just the guy that would stall. I, uh, I very much understood how to do the whole amputate thing. Uh, stem the bleeding. Uh, and just build back, because otherwise... Yeah, you end up in a situation... But this is, this is dangerous. This is why I like to have... Again, like, uh, a layer of walls, like, back here with the gate, and then a layer of walls here with the gate. That way you can't accidentally let units in. <sighs> this game is not over yet. But it will be if, if Giant just does not build back his economy. Because he had actually had enough time. He's had about, like, ten minutes here of actual game time where he could be really doing something. This game is long enough. I might split it into two parts, but you can always find that in the video description. Yeah, I mean, he really just, uh, these Lumberjacks aren't really doing anything. How much money does Giant Apple have? He has 70 food. And we know why, because, oh no, don't build farms, stop building the farms, just, just... Like, okay, when you when you die, you build a market, and you just, town centers. Town, so many town centers. Like, he should, you should ask your teammates for some resources if need be. Build, like, seven or eight town centers. And just get to that, that resource, oh, this lumber camp, no, the town centers. Make some TCs. <laughs> That should be the first thing that comes to your mind. And hopefully, if you keep watching my videos, that that should be just deeply embedded in your brain. To the point where, on reflex, if someone comes at you with a knife in real life and you're injured, your first thought is, how can I build back my economy? How many more town centers can I put down? And where can I put my town centers safely? As you're getting mugged. That should be the first thing that comes to your mind. Because you can build back, we can rebuild him, we have the technology, he just needs to build uh, some additional TCs. Because really, like, this this offensive push is not... It's getting somewhere, but it's not really making that much progress. And now Orange is, is shifting over here. So, I still think they're going to lose, but they don't necessarily have to. I'm going to need to see more TCs. <laughs> yes, it's exactly what Scott said. Oh no, I've been stabbed, must build town centers. Build TCs. Red Hunter says, why make town centers? I'm a noob trying to get good at this. Isn't bills and stuff cheaper? Oh no, that's a good question. Keep asking those questions, Red Hunter. It's very helpful for me. The reason you want to build more town centers and not mills, when, this is assuming, again, once you've died and you're trying to build back because the rest of your team is still doing well, is because you need to make more villagers. Mills don't produce villagers. He's at 41 population, and he's just not building town centers. Uh, and he's like a market and just six or seven town centers. Uh, to try and get back to you, because in every game at Age of Empires 2, no matter what, you want to get to 100 to 120 villagers as fast as possible. Um, and this is because if you don't have a large enough economy, then you're not going to have enough resources to actually sustain military production in the late game. Uh, you know, your opponent is just going to have like a ton of military buildings like this, and it's just going to be pumping out paladins from like 10 stables. And if you don't have 100 to 120 villagers, you're not going to be able to keep up with that. You don't want to build too many more villagers than that, or you'll have no room for your army, but that's kind of the sweet spot. And you know, here, Giant is just a non-entity until he builds, like, six or seven town centers, which should be the first reaction when you lose your base, is, how do I get my economy back on track first? Because he spent all this, all of this food on military units, and I know I'm harping on this, but this is the most important thing I want you to take away from this video, guys, is, when you die, sometimes you haven't lost yet, if you're the flank. Build the TCs, get huge, get swole! Glad to help you, Red Hunter. Yeah, they could also... Yeah, and then uh, also, if you're dead, you know, you can also transition into slinging or something like that. You have options. <laughs> bills don't get bills. <laughs> yes. 
So anyway, yeah, well, one TC is a, is a pretty huge gamble when you're dead. Uh, but again, not a big deal. I think Giant has been playing this game really well. It's just that uh, I, I need to make sure that everybody is all on the same page here and we all understand that uh, building back the economy is Am I live now? I think, uh, hopefully I'm live again. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Sorry about that, I have no idea what happened. Twitch servers died. I was talking about this anyway, so I'm just gonna continue this point, is that a lot of the time you'll be in that situation where you were the flank that died, and then you're, the other flank is actually making some, some plays and actually pushing out. So hopefully the goal is, is that you guys learn from this and that way you're able to actually secure some wins. Because look at this. If you follow my instructions and you build back, you can win the game! Because the truth is, is that yes, you can do wrong. Uh, and that you want to give your teammates a chance to actually make some huge plays. So die slowly. Cauterize that wound. Stonewall up. Build up that eco. Don't give up. Where are the rest of those TCs? Build a market, buy some stone. Stop building farms, stop building lumber camps. Just town centers, six or seven. <laughs> Get to 120 as fast as possible because you can actually make a comeback. You can. We're experiencing a little bit of lag. I think my internet might be dying. Oh man. Or Boogeyman's internet's dying, I'm not really sure. <laughs> the stream, oh my god. But let me know if it, if it goes down. I uh, lost a lot of viewers doing that, it was a little disappointing. But yeah, I just... Uh, <laughs> this game is great. This is actually one of the best Black Forest games I've seen. Hopefully this makes you appreciate Black Forest a little bit more. It's a little slow. Yes. But you know what? I, I really enjoy it. Uh, but I also really enjoy Ravi. It's just another slice of Age of Empires 2. And I think the community, at least the higher rated one, kind of looks down on Black Forest. But it's a really good way to just learn the fundamentals of the game. Because I feel like um, one of the things with Age of Empires 2 is the skill where you have to learn to manage both your economy and your military at the same time. That can be very daunting for new players. And that's why I really like Black Forest as a map for new players, even though it has a really high skill ceiling is that it teaches players to focus on like one thing at a time. It's it's much easier for players to learn entirely how to focus on their economy, and then once their economy is, is back in business, um, and they get to the Imperial Age, that's when they work on the military. And then eventually, when you get good enough, you can combine the two, and then start working on some more uh, aggressive maps. Now, uh, always be courteous to your teammates, and you know, work with them. Don't resign. Don't give up until really like nothing is actually happening, until the rest of your team is done. Resign as a team. The thing in like team games like Age of Empires 2, League of Legends, Dota, or whatever games you're playing, it's important to work with your teammates, be nice to them, and just make sure that you, you win and resign as a team. Because uh, again, you know, if, if Giant Apple resigned there, then maybe this game would have just been over. He's really just has, just is not really building back though. He, he does have some town centers now, which is good, he's pumping out the trade carts. Uh, and it just might just be too little too late though. Um, I wonder if they're actually going to be able to build this back because Blue's just going straight for the economy. I really like this. This is crippling their offensive push on this side. So if they can just stall, and they might be able to, then maybe they'll be fine. Tormakoi really just crippled. Tormakoi is going to be spreading his town centers across the map, though. He did put them in pretty safe locations, so maybe he'll be fine. If they can get to the trade line, then maybe they'll be good to go. I don't know what these stone walls are protecting, but I guess they're just trying to let them mess up some units. Blackwind says I once won a game of Ghost Lake where I had 14 pop and M. Remember that? Yep. That happens all the time. And the Goss carrying the game. But we, we have to give credit to everybody. This is a team effort here. Giant didn't die. Uh, the Doogie has also been applying a lot of offensive pressure. He still is missing Blast Furnace, but it's okay because when I play Jump Empires 2, I'm always missing my Blacksmith upgrades too. And uh, yeah, Tormakoi is just trying to apply some pressure. Hopefully he's just going to build back a bit. It's going to be tricky. Plaguey has lost a lot of his base. <laughs> I'm going to run out of my voice. I'm going to have to split this into two parts. Oh my goodness. While I'm in the middle of this, by the way, I would really appreciate it if you guys would take the time to uh, check out my Facebook and Twitter pages. Particularly my Twitter page is... Uh, I didn't really have that many followers there. It's something that I'm trying to use just more often in general. So Twitter and Facebook are a good way to figure out when I'm live streaming next and also just a way to get a slice of my life and see what I'm up to. Uh, so definitely give those a look. And again, thank you guys so much for those of you who take the time to show your support and you know, be nice uh, and hopefully enjoy the videos that I do for other games. As in order for me to just keep the channel afloat and stick around, uh, I need to be able to branch out. So again, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I've noticed that the most recent Hearthstone stuff I've done has been pretty well received, so thank you. Ah. Uh.
some res lag right here. Did the stream die? Did it stop recording? Oh my god, I am dropping frames. Uh, and I'm back? Oh no, my internet's dying. I don't know what I missed. Anyway, I was just saying, thank you so much for those of you who take the time to support my content for other games. It's really helpful for the longevity of the channel. I'd like to be able to stick around and continue producing Age of Empires 2 content uh, until the end of the development cycle. Uh, and in order to do that, you know, I'm, I'm more motivated to do more Age of Empires stuff, the better received my videos for other games are. Uh, and it's going to be like more than just Hearthstone, just a wide variety of things. I'd like to just kind of branch out and use my channel as an opportunity to share the games I really enjoy. Much like AoE 2! This is why we have the res lag emote. I need to update some of my Twitch emotes if you guys have any suggestions. I, at some point I'm probably going to replace the res farm and the res bill uh, with something else. I'm just not sure what those should be. Well, look, it looks like that after this game, we'll have to replace more than just my router, but my voice as well. As uh, this, is, this is a long game. There's going to be two parts posted on YouTube. <sighs> yeah, I, I really feel like Age of Empires 2 is one of those games that could really benefit guys from some sort of HD port on Steam, some more HD remake, some, like, addition of Age of Empires 2 that had, like, significantly better graphics and a better engine. I don't know what we'd call it, though. Yes. That sounds like a really good idea. I feel like a lot of people would play that, considering that Age of Empires 2 is such a such a huge player base after so long that it just makes sense to port Age of Empires 2 into a modern engine, like put it on Steam, have all sorts of fancy uh, competitive tournament support for it, maybe something along the lines of like Voobly Spectator System, but maybe better because it would be like integrated with Steam. That sounds like a good idea. Oh, hopefully Microsoft is interested. <laughs> AV2 Multiplayer Edition. Yeah, that's, uh, that's my face in the red space emote. Pray for mercy says the user channel is the way to not lose the easy bot. Well, thank you. <laughs> I also have the Resonance Podcast of AI for practice. I'm a little distracted after losing the internet and then missing out on, like, ten minutes of whatever I was rambling about. But, uh, we're back in the game itself. It is not over yet. Somehow, this is the longest Black Forest game in the world. It's not, actually. I have a four-hour Black Forest game at the end of my channel. In one of the first videos I've uploaded. I'm curious if any of you have actually taken the time to look at some of the older stuff I posted. I have a four-hour Black Forest game that I was playing as Chinese. Uh, October Octobeer says, Do you wish pro players get used to the new Forgotten and African Kingdoms or not? I would like to see them playing on the Forgotten and African Kingdoms, yes. It's just a way to freshen up the metagame as I've been doing the same thing. You know, I've seen countless Arabia 1 vs. 1 Huns on 1.0c, so... It would be nice to see something interesting. However, I do not encourage them to go over to AOE2 HD until AOE2 HD gets some like significant performance improvements, uh, bug fixes, and additional features. I wish it does not have that. Chaining Salt said just multi-threading the game would do so much. Indeed, completely agree. Yeah, I mostly meant Lydiac, the ones on uh, the Resonance 22 channel. I guess one last thing before we get back into the... <laughs> too much into the game itself. It's throwing me off my groove and I'm exhausted now. As, uh, also, feel free guys to check out the Res Quotes subreddit. Uh, if there are any particularly funny quotes that you have of me or just interesting quotes uh, from any of my videos, you know, obviously not just this one. Uh, but, yeah, feel free to check out the Res Quotes subreddit. It's something I do look at. Just make sure you follow the rules in the sidebar as a lot of people don't get the formatting quite right and don't link to it. So right about now, it looks like just everybody is, is very confused with the current state of this game after all the lag and the stream dropping and... Uh, that's why we have this interesting sort of wall placement where this woman got walled in alive. It's so brutal, and there's actually a hole, too. <laughs> Not the most efficient wall up here, but he is the goths. In that case, you do want to be using uh, houses or something for that. Red, not dead. Neither is orange. They actually just got repelled here entirely. So is this the killing blow? I, I don't know. Blue going to lose a lot of his units, too. Onagers, but excellent to see that the boogeyman is taking full advantage of the split formation. When you're dealing with your opponent's onagers, because yes, onagers can still deal with infantry, make sure that you don't clump your units like such, but you actually want to be using the staggered formation. Thank you so much, Mangadide, for the five-month reset. Really appreciate it. Ah, thank you, Rob C. You said that I've seen both the Chinese and the Saracen one. The Black One says, you know, it was the biggest plot twist when I found out that you were the guy from the old-school Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds video. <laughs> yeah, the ones in on the Illuminate channel. Rob C. asked, can we get an update on Yellow? Absolutely. 
Giant Apple is building back his economy. It might be too little too late, but he's, he's not out yet, and it looks like the Doogie is building a new defensive perimeter, so they're not dead yet. <laughs> they are not dead yet. Oh my god. And all well, green going to be pushed back here. Orange moving in with the Heavy Scorpions. I actually do like this a lot. Heavy Scorpions, very bad versus the Elite Huskarls, but not completely awful. Uh, they are excellent, though, versus the Halberdiers and the Elite Skirms. Teal will finally be moving his army up. Gotta move that in sync, but it just takes practice, you know, being able to... What the hell? Not exactly sure, but I'm looking at it. It appears that Red has snuck some Light Cavalry into this trade line, and Teal is defending it with Militia? One hour and 47 minutes in the game. No, oh, he just has a lot of Militia. Well, that's interesting because I checked the tech tree. I'm pretty sure that the Ethiopians don't get champions. So why would you be making those? I'm not sure. Now, you would... Okay, like, the only time you'd want to make two-handed swordsmen as the Ethiopians or the Mayans or the Huns would be if your opponent was the Goths and making Huskarls. But I'm pretty sure the Goths is on his team. Or your opponent was making a lot of Eagle Warriors. But there are no Mesoamerican civs in this game, so... Not sure why these are a thing, because two-handed swordsmen as a unit is actually very weak compared to the champion. Uh, it's an incredibly weak unit. Uh, sure, it's cheap to create, but I feel like he would be much better served. I think that the reason he's doing this is because he does not have enough castles to sustain Shotel Warrior production. But Shotel Warriors are just strictly better here. So what I would like to see is someone to grab this relic and mine the stone, and then maybe they would uh, buy enough stone to build additional castles near the back. That's also why I like to build castles in the back of my base. Uh, and then spend that money on Shotel Warriors, because this seems like a, a huge waste. Did he accidentally queue up all of those militia? Because he's upgrading them. I uh, I think that I think that is I think that's going to be a little unfortunate. So I would again like to see just buying some stone to build castles. Oh, he said it was an accident, really. Spam militia instead of helms. Okay. Well, that that that's a lot of that was a lot to queue up. <laughs> well, he's getting the upgrades for them anyway because why not? So I guess that was a yeah. I guess he just shift spammed it. That's a lot. So my goodness. It's happened to the best of us, though. Like, we saw in the African Kingdom's showcase that uh, we actually saw a bunch of sh uh, siege towers queued up by accident. Well, again, the game's still not over yet. What do you do in a situation like this? And the game is two hours long and Rez is about to pass out. Uh, what do you do in a situation like this? You cut. You cut. You cut for your dear life. You take an Onager, because this is the Forgotten, or if it was not, then you would just take a Siege Onager. Hopefully you had a sieve with that. And you would sneakily put on your spying music, Mission Impossible theme, James Bond theme or something, and you just cut through here, you make a mad dash for the trade line, and you end the game. If you kill the trade line, you end the game. And that's why I like to see Red raiding the trade line, but I really feel like they should just cut and go rather than continually pushing on this side. Because pushing here on the bottom is not working. Pushing on this side is not working. Pushing here is not working, so open up an additional front. Alternatively, if you're really sneaky, you cut through here, along the edge of the map, very slowly, very slowly. You put some military production, you have Pink Panther theme, there we go, you put some military buildings over here, and you come in the back way. We are late enough into the game that Onagers are going to be what's going to break the stall here. I do like to see that he has fortified wall this. This is nice. Because he needs this little, Giant Apple needs this area of map control, because this is where he's going to put down military buildings and he has some like economy there, because it's really just... Space is going to be a huge issue on Black Forest as the game drags on. So he needs a little bit of map control to himself. Meanwhile, it looks like Orange and Red have secured this hill. Blue still managing to hold the line. <laughs> yeah, Boogie has had a lot of his uh, bills in his town centers for quite a while, but he has ungarrisoned them. This is a huge trade line. Like, how you end the stall is you just... You kill the trade line. And it's also... It, we're long enough into the game where the relics didn't really matter early on, but now at this point they certainly are... And if you are the defending team in this situation, you also need to keep in mind that what you're doing here... I guess that they're less pressured to really change up their strategy and try something crazy. Why exactly are they less pressured to do so? This is because they've been playing with a man down for quite a while. Giant Apple has amputated all of his limbs, uh, and you know he's been recovering for a while. But the good news is, though, is that we have given him bionic limbs that were far stronger run than his previous ones, and he will be able to spam paladins. So... Teal and Blue do have a fallback plan, they do have a win condition, and you always have to be thinking about how to play to 
You should be playing to win, not playing to not lose. And this is a very important concept that Orange and Green are playing to not lose. Except in basically every strategy game. Uh, whereas right now, you know, Red... If they were going to make a winning play, it would be just going for the market and just trying to take out the trade line. Uh, whereas, you know, Blue and Teal can still wait on Yellow to build back and start getting the Paladin spam working. And Yellow has finally built back into the game, so great on Giant Apple. He's a relevant fighting force. These two have been 2v3ing the entire time. Will this be the thing that ends the game? Do I have to make it three parts? We'll see. Thank you, Lizzo. Ah, all right, let's check out uh, Giant Apple's economy a little bit. Yeah, so Giant Apple is at max population. This is great. He is a little bit low on the gold department, but this is okay considering that he is pop capped. I, I've seen, I think the Doogie was also in 195 for a while. Make that one house, my friend. Uh, this, you just want to like shift sell wooden food at the market, make sure you have guilds researched, of course, uh, so you get a much better exchange rate. Now he's just spamming the paladins. I think this is actually pretty good because there aren't. I mean, there are a lot of skirms here, a lot of cavalry archers, uh, so the paladins will be fine. And if you're yellow, I mean, you could even take a huge gambit and perhaps just send a bunch of your paladins down the middle of the map because this is not walled. Again, once the fronts change and your opponents start pushing down you know, different uh, choke points, then you want to make sure that you close up this one. You could just send some paladins in here and just try and find those markets and kill them because, again, that's how you do it. That is the boss's weak point. What you hit for massive damage is the, is the market, so... They just need to suicide a bunch of paladins to take out the market and they can win the game. Blackman says, I see you're doing a memb and doing a 24-hour stream. Was not my intention, but... Oh, man. Might have to make this a trilogy. And get some water. So, back to the game itself, uh, the red, orange, and green team will be reinforcing the bottom side of the map. Why? Because they know Giant Apple is back, spamming tons of military units, and now it is on Tormakoi. Can he build back his economy? The answer is hopefully yes, as he's on extremely low population, but he does have a lot of map control at his disposal, something that we don't see happen too often where you lose your base and you actually have ample space to rebuild. So he should be working uh, on just getting his economy back in the game. Because right now the momentum is on the other foot. Or the shoe is on the other foot. The momentum has shifted. <laughs> momentum is on the other foot. Yes. As, uh, yeah, the blue, yellow, and teal team will be able to push down the bottom side of the map. Because it is a 3v2 situation. Meanwhile, red just trying to desperately, you know, make a play of his own. And push into blue's base. But he just won't be able to because... Really, Red just doesn't have the economy to be much of a threat at this point in the game. He's just making military units now, but he needs to get that economy back. He is queuing up a couple of villagers, though. This is good. And after this video, uh, I think that everybody will be ready to rebuild their economy after they die. Hopefully. Oh. Well, yeah, Blue doesn't really need to commit that much population to defend here. Maybe they need more trade cards if they're running a little bit low on the gold side of things. Here come the Paladins. Uh, I'd say an interesting thing here is if you bait your opponent into making a ton of Halberdiers while you're spamming Paladins and you have a bunch of Archer Rangers at the back and you start transitioning to Hand Cannoneers, that can generally be a big enough swing to close out a game. They're, it looks like the, they're just going to win this the hard way. Um, I feel like since this is sort of a 2v2 right now, that if you're a Giant, maybe you want to let them just stall on this side and just go straight for the market to close this out, but... I mean, they could really... There we go. Alfarius like, red rebuild economy. Yes. Because now yellow's back in the game. Everyone discounted John, but he is pushing. If they want to win this the old-fashioned way, I honestly think they can. They just have to get through so much stuff. This is also, by the way, why I like what Plaguey did here. It's something that I like to do, which is salt the earth as you, you push forward in Black Forest. And these are things that you don't see. Again, Arabia has, like... An incredibly high skill cap too. It's just the, it just showcases some different aspects of Age of Empires too. But Black Forest, you get to see very interesting things like so you managed to have claimed some land on the opposing team because it's very clear what side of the map is whose in Black Forest. 
What do you do? Salt the earth. Make it as obnoxious as humanly possible for your opponents to push through it. So what do you do? You put down a ton of military buildings, sometimes from bard towers, castles. You just make it ridiculously difficult for them to claim that land. Because a huge part of Black Forest is map control. Making sure that you just have enough units and you have enough space. Because that's what we're fighting for in Black Forest. We're fighting over space. So... As long as Orange can just hold this area, they have more resources available on the map. They have more areas in which, and windows in which they can attack. So, this gives them, you know, places where they can cut through. I feel like these guys are pushing just so slowly. You just gotta, you just gotta go. Also, I think that if you're yellow and you have these paladins, you just run past these guys and you try and get into the trade line. But it looks like there's, there are stone walls here. Oh, Green was not born yesterday. Check this out. He's doing what I'm doing, which is that you don't put two gates like directly adjacent to each other, but you put them with like a little bit of space. That way it's harder for your army to accidentally leave them open and your opponent just run past them. I would like to see some Onager cutting action. There's really nothing that you can do uh, to prevent that besides like putting castles around your Marcus, but that's really expensive. Uh, and yeah, I think they're in, a, they're in a position where, believe it or not, they can just win the game it's, if they just... If they just push! Ignore these military buildings. Just go for these walls. Do the Magyars even get fortified walls? I don't even think they do. I mean, what we're doing right now is we're giving Alpharius so much time to just, you know, make a meager defense. And Alpharius is going to try and push on the top side of the map. This is actually interesting. I do like this play on his part. Where, you know, obviously they're losing the bottom side of the map. And it's going to take a, a miracle to turn that around in a 3v2 situation. So he's just saying, screw it. And he knows that the opposing team is taking forever to push. So, since Green knows he has his time, and he's building the stone wall here, yes, just keep building more walls. He's going to try and push over here and try and raid this trade line. However, Blue has set up a really nice choke point, and Green realized that he actually cannot run past these units. And he's just going to die to all these Hubertiers. So, I really like that Green is trying to just get into that trade line there. You can tell he was definitely trying to do that, but he's just stuck by these, these Palisade walls. And this is why you always want to have walls behind the front. Um, I very rarely like to have walls in front of where I'm pushing, but I like to have them behind, and because that really restricts your opponent's options. So Blue's going to come in here, he's going to try and get to that trade line, he will be met by a bunch of walls, but the gates are open, because I think the walls are a little too close to each other. These things are kind of immune to castle fires, so can he get in there and kill a market? That is the question he's, he's looking for, he's thirsty. Does he know where they are? He does not. Playing in the dark. Blue feeling his way around. He's found some peasants. Yeah, we're not doing forest nothing after this. <laughs> Sinistro Jr. says, I love playing with my friends against your resin spot AI. But sometimes we'd like to play against a more defensive AI who builds walls. Is there any for HD? Have you ever considered making one? Oh, actually, if you check the the Steam Workshop page for Resonance Bot 5-1C. So if you check Resonance Bot on Steam Workshop, uh, there's a little fact file. Uh, FAQ file, and uh, there's actually a command to make resins bot build walls. Now, the thing is, is, though, is that AI's building walls in HD is kind of bad because their units get stuck on them, so I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, if you want my AI to play more defensively, play on a map like Arena, um, because they don't get stuck on Arena. So to play Arena, you could even set, like, a treaty or something like that. Um, and on the lower difficulties, they, they take a while to attack, so... Try Arena. I think Arena is a good map for resins bot to play defensively on. Uh, I would not recommend turning on the walls thing, though. Like, they'll probably get stuck. Forest nothing, Mayans only. Uh, yes. So here, in this case, we also want to think about, are there opportunities to cut? I, I think there are. Um, the middle of the map is just relatively undefended. I just send some military units in here. Has Red really built his, rebuilt his economy yet? Uh, a little bit, a little bit, but I don't think he has that many trade cards. Oh, this is a weak trade line. What is this? Well, they need to work on this. Reassign some of those trade cards. Yeah, Red should not be trading with this market. I just heard a USB thing unplug. What was that? Okay, well, hopefully we're fine. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Protoss Imba thanks David Kim. <laughs> that is one of the best usernames I've seen on Twitch, and I have seen a lot of great usernames, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, my AI does delete us walls in arena. That's just because they don't get stuck. This is when, again, this is what we need. We need Spirit of the Law to analyze real game situations and tell us just how much... How much gold did we lose here? 
Because Spirit of Law likes to uh, analyze a lot of like hypothetical situations, but yeah, maybe I could maybe I can get him to to analyze my replays. Because this would be really interesting. So we get a rough idea of how inefficient that is, but I would like to specifically know how much money was lost. A lot of money, I would say. It does accumulate over time. And <laughs> yeah, now I just need to find someone in, in Infestor's Imba. Thanks, David Kim. Wow, wow, wow. Plaguey's like, wanna GG. I cannot believe it, but, uh... I mean, really, they haven't lost it either. This game is so... going on for so long. Basically, if you're Black Forest games, call your doctor if you're playing Black Forest for longer than four hours. And then hopefully he'll prescribe you a Siege Onager, because that way you just... Cut. Cut through the trees. Go for the trade line, my friends. The game does not need to last two hours. Like, I just... You know, I would say that the moment that the game hits one hour and like 20 minutes in, and we haven't won yet, and the enemy team is showing somewhat promising signs of life, I would start putting on the Pink Panther theme, and you just... I would start cutting along the edge of the map, slowly, steadily, carefully, throwing down an outpost, making sure no one sees me. I just slowly sneak in here, get into the corner, and that's when I pounce! So I go straight for the market, we win the game, and then all the heroic music plays. It doesn't always work out that way, but, you know, when the game's going on for this long, you have to start thinking about how do you get to the trade line, because that's really the lifeblood. That is the lifeblood of your team in late game Black Forest. Well, unless it's like this. Then you have very unhealthy bad blood. Well. Red. Sending in some elite skirms. Blue. Defending on top of this hill. This is kind of going to be a, a futile effort, honestly, on the part of Red, because Blue does have a definitive hill advantage. He's trying to get on top of the hill, though, to make it a, a little bit better for him, so that's kind of nice, because member units um, that have an elevation advantage do take 25% less damage uh, and deal 25% more. Thank you, Rob C. Play two hours to die like this? Yeah. Uh, Kim Jong-un loves Sony. <laughs> That's also a great name. Ask, have you and Spirit ever played a game together? If not, why not? Oh, I've just never really talked to him or anything. Uh, no particular reason why. I know I have not played with him. I don't play that much Age of Empires 2 these days outside of our inner circle. Um, so, you know, I play with you guys all the time. I play with all the Twitch subs and all the all the Twitch viewers, and I play with my friends, but I don't really play miscellaneous online games that much. Well, I guess it's just much easier to balance the teams when I know everybody, um, and I'd much rather spend time with you guys. So, it could certainly happen, but these days, after doing so many AoE videos and playing so much Age of Empires 2, I just... Yeah, I spend so much time doing it that uh, I, I mostly just do other stuff. But, uh, yeah, it can happen. I need, to, I need to find all these, like, really interesting situations like this in all of my replays and just send it to him and just see how inefficient is this. Because uh, they have it set up in such a weird way that, like, what a web of what, some Illuminati shit right here. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but this is very inefficient. I realize it's safe and that's why they're doing it because they lost their markets earlier, but... One of the first things that should come to your mind in a situation like this is, why am I so poor, and is it safe that I can build a market here? The answer is yes, you can rebuild your market here and retest the trade cards. Um, yeah, they can build a market here and retest the trade cards, and that's much safer yeah, over here. But they're content to just leave it like this. I mean, oh god, with all the lumber camps in the way, too. I just want to know how much more money they could have made in the optimum situation. <laughs> This was really exciting, Ready Teddy. I just, uh, it just didn't need to be this slow, you know? Um, so hopefully you guys, I guess, understand on some, some level and appreciate it that, uh, hopefully this match shows you both the good and the bad of Black Forest. Uh, it can be incredibly interesting in depth, uh, and feature a lot of strategy to it, but, you know, a lot of people do miss out on, but at the same time, if you don't know what to do in the late game, you don't know to focus the trade line, then things can just fall apart and the game can go on for approximately forever. This is why Sujin decided to make Siege Onagers, uh, not just Siege Onagers, be able to cut trees, but regular Onagers too, for situations like this. And no, we're not going to do another Black Forest for a while, but... Um, Tormacoy says, sorry guys, I need to leave, it's important. I really can't blame him. Uh... <laughs> oh, this is, such a, this is such an average game of Age of Empires 2, isn't it? 
Wow, I, I, I don't blame him. Like, normally this is when I would be like, oh, come on, you can't queue up for a game and then not commit enough time to finish it, except that the games were going over two hours and 20 minutes. I, uh, I really don't blame him. So Tormakoi's gotta go, and that's really what's gonna end the game. <laughs> Poor Redman. The Lumicardi. Kim Jong-un, I'd love Sony to say, do you think it would be an even match, or do you think one of you would steamroll the other? I don't think it would be close, no. Oh, you mean play versus him? Oh no, I don't 1v1, I don't 1v1 other, other YouTube channels, because it just creates a circle joke over who's the better player. No, 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 I don't think the match would be close, but that's not the point. I don't want anybody... I don't want anyone circle jerking about that, you know? Um, like, people... It does... <sighs> Someone's quality of content doesn't 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 really matter. You don't have to be incredibly good at like Age of Empires 2 to actually be able to produce good content. So I don't want anyone, you know. I don't want it to be a competition. That's why I don't one v one zero empires. I don't one v one Spirit of the Law because you know I don't want anyone to. I, I don't want that to just be the thing that people circle jerk about. If that makes any sense. <laughs> the funny part is that we'll keep playing. Literally LCS. Oh, I know. Blackman says, thankfully, Restore works in HD Kappa, yeah. Okay, well, I think it's, it, it's safe for at least me to back out of this game, because they totally lost at this point. Kind of a, uh... This was a very good game. It, it did go on for a while and kind of an anticlimactic ending, but I hope you guys enjoyed that nonetheless. Um, and yeah, if you did, please do let me know. I do read all the comments. And again, I appreciate the support, guys. So thank you, thank you. Well, well. It looks like Alpharius will not resign, so I am just going to take the liberty of backing out into the achievements menu. So we're just going to we're just going to go to the achievements menu, guys. As uh, <laughs> I'm not sitting through the not sitting through the rest of that. Oh my goodness! Well, if we check out the achievements here. Orange had a lot of units killed. Uh, blue being our Goths player, understandably, but have the most units lost. And overall, this just looks pretty solid. Most units converted goes to Tormakoi. That is some significant trade profit for blue. This is, this is also the thing. Uh, all those really bad trade profit for teal. And red. Ugh. When you're two hours and 22 minutes in the game and you have less than 5,000 trade profit... Your trade line may not have been that efficient. I think that Blue probably had too much trade profit, uh, but, you know, if he needed the gold, he needed the gold. Um, you know, something like 19k, 13k is more reasonable, but uh, probably didn't have enough trade cards. Um, yeah, especially on Black Forest, where it's safer to uh, protect them, so. I feel like they certainly did not have enough trade cards if the trade profit was that low. That's pretty, that is pretty low. It's about normal. Red was the uh, fastest castle time <coughs> and fastest imp time. A little bit slow on the feudal age here for uh, green and yellow, but that is fine. Again, these are things that you'll just pick up as you practice. Uh, practice more, and you get just more efficient with things. But yeah, just overall, everything looks solid here. Um, I think Tormakoi could have had more villagers. Yeah, 87 is a little low. It should always be a minimum of 100, I would say. You know, assuming you're playing 200 or more population. So. Uh, I think 87 was a little bit low, but everyone else's economy looked Rock solid. Two relics. 6,800 gold, not bad. If we look at the timeline, this is a very close game. Oh my god, that is a lot of wood collected. <laughs> it's a lot of trees! So close to the 2,000 kills Steam achievement. Indeed, Master Silvergreen. Alright guys, well... Thank you so much for sitting through this entire video. Uh, I really appreciate it. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Um, if you learned something and specifically what. And it really helps me out a lot. And yeah, I'm trying to keep the commentary a little bit more focused. Uh, to try and just keep things interesting. And as I branch out, again, I just really appreciate the support. And I know I say it a lot, but... <laughs> I understand that it's hard for people. Because some people are just really used to only Age of Empires 2. But again, yeah. It means a lot to me. We really do have one of the best communities here on YouTube and Twitch, and I look forward to sticking around here for the foreseeable future, and for those of you who take the time to check out the non-Age of Empires stuff, you help make that possible. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Live stream schedule on Twitch. Check out Facebook and Twitter for updates on that. And we'll be right back. Uh, I will be playing one more game. Um, I need to rest my voice, mind you, but I will be playing another game, so uh, stick around, stick around. That was really long. I'll post it on YouTube soon, and... 
yeah, I'll see you all shortly. Thank you for being awesome. Stick around.